What's going on, everybody? That was about as suspenseful as I could possibly make photo editing look like. In this episode, we're talking my Lightroom workflow, no Photoshop, Lightroom only. Let's get after it. All right, so we're gonna jump right in here. So as you can see, these are the two images. Uh, the one on the left is the is straight out of camera. It's, it's pretty underexposed, and the image on the right side is the final image. So we're gonna jump right in here gonna go over to the develop module. And before I kick things off, I always wanna make sure that the brightness on my monitor is turned up about halfway. It's always a good starting point before you start editing, editing an image. And then I'm gonna jump over to the lens correction section. Always remove chromatic aberrations. This image doesn't have any. It never hurts to select it though. And then enable profile corrections. Lightroom does a good job of um, keeping up with the lens profiles that they have available. Um, as you can see, this is the Zeiss 25 millimeter prime bodice lens, it's an F2. And by selecting the profile correction, it automatically removes all the natural vignetting that occurs with the lens and also takes out that barrel distortion. And it does a really good job just right there. That's a great starting point. Once that is done, I always jump straight to the um, to straightening the image. And I try and do everything in camera. Sometimes it's hard to get the horizon lines perfectly straight, but as far as um, filling the frame with what I actually want in the image, I, I, I kind of go the extra mile to, to not rely on cropping and post. So I always try and fill the frame in camera the first time. I would always rather spend more time in the field than I would at home behind a computer. So um, always try and get that done in camera the first time. Um, I straighten out the images the old fashioned way. I just like right here, I'm taking this grid line here and I'm just trying to match it up with the river bank. And I believe, and I do it the manual way, uh, about minus 70 looks correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now, uh, after I have that completed, I always jump straight to the basic tab. And what I like to do is if you hold down the shift key and double click on exposure, Lightroom will tell you what they think this image needs. Now, Lightroom is good on the highlights and the shadows, but on the exposure, it kind of overdoes it a little bit. And I do this just to kind of get a starting point on where I should, should begin moving the sliders. So I always say Lightroom does exposure a little, little overdone. It cooks it a little too much. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. I'm gonna hold down shift again and double click highlights and shadows. Much better on this side. Uh, I think minus 50 on the highlights is about right. I'm gonna go just a little bit farther. And then I'm gonna go a little farther on the shadows. Just wanna bring back some of the detail that's um, kind of looks appears to be lost underneath this boulder and, and down here under this rock ledge. And then as far as the whites go, I, I work on a Mac, so hold down Alt Option. And then you just move the whites around until you see the color starting to bleed through. And that's usually where I leave it at. So right there, plus 13, do the same thing with blacks, hold down Alt Option. I take the blacks a little bit farther though. As you can see, uh, nothing's bleeding through here. It's starting to now, and I go just a little bit farther. So I think minus 19 is good. Now this subsection of the basic tab called presence with the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. This is a, a very dangerous section. I see a lot of images where the people make it, they overdo the clarity, the image looks super crusty, they throw the vibrance through the roof, saturation all the way up, and before you know it, you have this oil painting from some planet, and it just looks completely HDR-ish and, and overdone. So you really wanna be careful here. Let me take these back to, to normal. For clarity, I very rarely go above 20, usually right around 10 or 15. Vibrance, right around 10, and saturation, just a touch, just to bring out a little color. I do saturation individually in uh, the color section. But that's everything in the basic tab. So let me close that. I typically jump down here to detail. This is where I apply my sharpening in Lightroom. So let me take this. Eh, now 65. I don't mess with the radius too much. If anything, I bring it up to 1.2. And then as far as masking goes, I always do this. So if you hold down Alt Option, and you start to move these around, everything that is white is being sharpened. So right now, if the masking is set at zero, the entire image is being sharpened, which very rarely want that. 
if you slide it over, the areas that are in black are, are not receiving the 65% of sharpening that you applied earlier. I'm going to take this to about 60. I don't, I usually don't try to sharpen clouds or the sky or certain parts of shadows where there's not a lot of detail or water. So right around there looks pretty good. As far as noise reduction goes, I believe this was shot at ISO 100, so there's not a lot of noise. So I'm just going to add just a touch here and then close down the detail section. I try and keep all these tabs minimized. If you open them all up, you're going to find yourself scrolling up and down through here trying to find stuff, and it's just not a very efficient way to do it. Um, I had mentioned earlier about the color section. So what I do here is I don't do a whole lot with um, uh, the hue section, but I do with the saturation. And what I try and do is find out what, what are the predominant colors in an image. For this, obviously, it's the greens in the trees and it's the blue in the sky. So I'm going to try and accentuate that a little bit, maybe plus five on the greens. And it looks like there's some natural yellows and oranges that are occurring in the rocks here. So I want to kind of bring that out just a touch too. Maybe plus three on the orange and plus three on the yellow. And then as far as the sky goes, I, I like dark, stormy, ominous looking skies, which is not what was here on, on this particular day. This is white puffy clouds and bright blue skies. So I want to I want to manipulate that. And I do that by taking the saturation out of the aqua and blue colors. And then with the luminance, I do the same thing. And it might be a little bit overdone, but I want to really show you the difference here. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see what a huge difference that made. We went from a beautiful day outside to now storm clouds rolling in. So that really changes the entire mood of the image and I like that. Now, um, as far as the effects section goes, um, I, I do use the dehaze slider. This image has no haze in it at all, so I'm not gonna touch that. And I typically do add a little bit of a vignetting. I'm not going to apply anything to this particular image though. Now, as far as graduated filters and brushes goes, um, the graduated filter tab, I don't think it's gonna work that well in this section because there's a, a lot of branches sticking out here and there. There's just not a clean area to make one sweeping adjustment. But what I can do is go over here to the brushes tab. And if we want to darken the storm clouds even further, we can just hit edit, pull it up here. I'm sorry, new highlights. And I always like to select this show selected mask overlay. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you the area that you're actually affecting with the brush. So, this paint over this. We won't get too granular on this today, but just to kind of show you what you can do. And that looks good there. And then we'll remove the show selected mask overlay. And then as you can see, it has the highlights by default all the way up and that's not what we want. We want to bring them down and we'll toggle this on and off. You can kind of see what that does. So you can really, you can do a lot of creative things with this, with skies, um, is with, with highlights. You can also add clarity to it. If you really want to bring out some of the uh, definition of clouds, which it, this image really doesn't need a lot of that. There's already a lot of de definition in the clouds and we've already made them look really dramatic and stormy in the HSL color section. So it doesn't need much there. And then, you might have noticed in the basic section, I didn't add any contrast, which of course you, you always want to add a little bit of contrast to an image, but this is global contrast. Sometimes I'll, I'll take this up to 10 or maybe 15 and, and globally do it. Another way that I like to do it is down here in the tone curve. And it actually has some preset. You could um, automatically just select medium contrast. You can change it to strong contrast, but that's typically where I do my, um, my uh, contrast color corrections or is in the tone curve. Um, this is only a Lightroom tutorial. So a lot of times I'll take this over to Photoshop and utilize lumina luminosity masks where I change um, independent values of uh, the midtones or the highlights or the shadows, but that's for a, a completely separate conversation. This is Lightroom only. And then once I have everything done, I typically, let me just lower this down just a touch. We'll do what I call dusting an image, which is when you go to the spot removal tool, you select visualize spots. And what this is great at is removing sensor dust. 
I think this image was shot at f11. You really, sensor dust really doesn't jump out at you until you get above like f16 and higher when you're shooting bright blue skies with nothing in it is where you see sensor dust, but nothing ruins an image quicker in my opinion than seeing sensor dust. As you can see here, there's so much going on, you're not gonna see any anyway. So this image does not need any of that. So, but this is what it looked like at the very end. I changed some of the colors of the trees just to kind of make it look a little bit more autumn. And I added some detail into the running water, as you can see here. So um, it's amazing what you can do. Lightroom is always my first step and um, before I send it over to Photoshop. And there you have it, quick and dirty, 10 minute Lightroom workflow. I know there's different ways that other people might have it doing it. This is just the workflow that I use on the majority of my images. In a future episode, I'm gonna create a um, content on Photoshop, utilizing luminosity masks and different types of sharpening techniques I apply to my images. If you enjoy the content I'm creating here, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye everyone.